It is estimated that an osteoporotic fracture occurs globally every 3 seconds and a vertebral fracture every 22 seconds. These are a direct result of osteoporosis, a skeletal disease characterized by low bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration of bone tissue. Uh, this disease affects more than 200 million people worldwide. Now the objective of this presentation is to explain the pathophysiology and various problems associated with osteoporosis. The presentation is divided into four sections dealing with prevalence, risk factors, pathogenesis, and treatment, respectively. An alternative label for osteoporosis is silent disease because of its unnoticed signs and symptoms. Now, as such, it accounts for an estimated 8.9 million fractures worldwide yearly, causing fractures in one out of three women and one in five men over the age of 50. It is one of the major causes of injury, long-term disability, and even death in the elderly worldwide. While any bone can be affected by osteoporosis, the most common are hip, spine, and wrist. The worldwide incidence of hip fractures from 1990 to 2000 has increased by 25%. Now by 2050, incidences are estimated to increase by 260% in females and 310% in males. This large increase is caused by a number of risk factors which will be discussed in the subsequent sections. Osteoporosis can be diagnosed by using techniques such as a dual energy x-ray absorptometry measuring the bone mineral content, BMC, or bone mineral density, BMD. Now the BMD can be further classified by a T-score. Normal bone density has a T-score of great, uh, greater than negative 1. Osteopenia, or weak bones, has a T-score between negative 1 and negative 2.5, whereas osteoporosis has a T-score less than negative 2.5. Now there are two types of osteoporosis. Now there's type 1, or primary osteoporosis, and there's type 2, or secondary osteoporosis. Now primary osteoporosis can be further divided into postmenopausal osteoporosis, which is more prevalent in women because women have weaker bones than men. Further, low estrogen levels after menopause can lower bone density by 20%, thus greatly increasing women's risk of bone fractures. Primary osteoporosis can also be divided into senile osteoporosis, which occurs with old age, basically. Now, secondary osteoporosis occurs as a consequence of other causes, such as drugs and various diseases. Now, many factors influence the risk, the increased risk of developing osteoporosis. These either, these either affect bone formation or bone resorption. Bone homeostasis requires a balance between these two biological mechanisms. Having weak bones is the main risk factor for osteoporotic fractures. Once peak bone mass is reached at around 30 years of age, bone resorption exceeds bone formation, which may eventually lead to senile osteoporosis. However, there are a lot of factors that significantly increase the risk of osteoporotic fractures. These risk factors can be divided into three categories, genetics, nutrition, and behavior. According to one journal, family history and genetics account for about 60 to 70 percent of variation in bone mineral density. Now, having Caucasian or Asian ethnicity, being female, especially postmenopausal, and certain diseases that accelerate bone loss, such as rheumatoid arthritis, increases the risk of developing osteoporosis. Nutritional factors, such as alcohol abuse, high caffeine, high sodium, and high protein intake, as well as low calcium and low vitamin D, which is vitamin D most comes from the sun, has been identified as risk factors for osteoporotic fractures. Eating disorders such as anorexia and binge eating, which results in a substantially low or high body mass index, also significantly increases the risk. Behavioral risk factors is caused by smoking and, free and, such and the frequent use of glucocorticoids or medication. To understand how some of these, disease, do these risk factors influence osteoporosis, the next section will explore the roles of bone resorbing and bone forming cells in the pathophysiology of this disease. Osteoporosis can be described physiologically as a disturbance in the bone remodeling cycle. 
which is the result of the inactivity or overactivity of bone cells. Now there are four bone cells, osteocytes, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and lining cells. Osteocytes make up 90% of the bone cells and rest inactive in the bone matrix. Osteoblasts are bone forming cells. They go over bone surfaces, secreting a collagen-like substance, which eventually solidifies into new bone. Once these cells have finished forming a new bone, they have three pathways to choose from. One, remain as active osteoblasts. Two, see synthetic activity and become osteocytes. Or three, become relatively inactive and form bone lining cells. Bone resorption, on the other hand, is carried out by these giant, multi-nucleated osteoclasts. Osteoclasts function by secreting acid on the surface of the bone matrix, absorbing calcified bone, extracting calcium, and destroying the bone matrix, finally resulting in a decrease in bone mass. The increased rate of osteoclast activity can be determined by a variety of factors, including hormones, such as parathyroid hormone and estrogen, vitamin D, and medication, such as glucocorticoids.